Okay, it's recording now. Yeah. I don't know. I pause it. But, yeah. Okay, we have software, we have Ariaman. Yeah, we see Ariaman and uh, Shankar Raman. Turn left. So, so for all of you who are joining, a um, couple of things. One is that uh, this workshop is being recorded. Uh, second is, uh, at some point soon, I'll need you to turn your camera on. So we are waiting for Shreya and uh, Ramya Rao. And yes. has uh, registered, but I don't know um, if they, are, they will be joining. So what is your, uh, your threshold? What time should I start with the people I have? I think, I think uh, we told 3.30, so we should be starting now, I think. Okay. I, I think there are four people um, now, right? Just Shrey, uh, uh, Shreya, we have to, uh, you know, uh, we were expecting her. Uh, but other than that, we can get started, uh, Raj. Also, Jayshree. I think Jayshree is in the register, right? Yeah, so Jai Shri Srinivasan, there are two sons, right? Uh, Shri Ayer. Uh, I don't know but I don't know if it is. She was okay. planning to join. Or... Yeah, it's for uh, the kids, I don't know. But then, yeah, uh, Ramya Rao and uh, uh, Shreya should be joining. But I think we will get started since it's uh, five minutes past. I think Shreya just joined. I think she was waiting there. Oh, yeah, okay. Shreya is here. Okay, let's get started. All right. Um, so, Ramya, you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. So, um, welcome everybody to uh, Yada's uh, Fall Workshop. Uh, the first time we are uh, trying out this uh, um, these workshops um, with uh, the talent in the community, uh, sharing the knowledge and uh, some of the learnings to uh, the youth artist community. So thank you all for signing up. This is the voice culture workshop. Uh, um, uh, Raj, uh, Rajagopalanji had graciously uh, agreed to present uh, this workshop. Uh, his learnings, these are very, very valuable because he's sharing his experiences um, and this knowledge that he had uh, gained to all the, all of you, uh, the youth artists, uh, to benefit. So thank you so much, Raj, for uh, for graciously doing this. Um, very noble uh, thought uh, of you. And uh, uh, with that, this is a five-day workshop. Uh, every day from 3.30 to 5, from Monday to Friday, uh, we would like, um, we will be sharing the recording, uh, recorded sessions at the end of every every day's uh, um, session. Um, and uh, Raj, is there anything that, you know, it is a continuity or can people join one or the other days? I'm trying to make all the days kind of standalone. 
Um, okay. Those are the topics right. like that. But of course, there'll be some bleed over from day to day. So maybe sure, sure, some. definitely. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. So then, you know, if um, yeah, we we have actually filled up the spots, but um, Raj uh, Raji can tell if, uh, if there are any any more people. You, if you think you can accommodate, probably they can, um, you know, invite their friends on the second day or third day. Um, yeah, let's so, let's see how it goes today, and yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure, that sure we'll be able to accommodate. But I don't sure, want to. Yeah, yeah, since we're doing it. First time, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. So, uh, any any questions um, to me specifically, or, or I'll give the floor to Raj, uh, Raj for uh, taking it up. Yeah, I think this is for all the audiences. I think you need to unmute yourself, guys. But I am very excited uh, for having you all here, and uh, um, hope you all enjoy the session. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Amir. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, sure. This is a, a task of you know passion for me. You know, voice culture has been a, a big uh, thing in my life for quite a few years now, and so I really appreciate the chance to uh, share this with the community. And without a platform like this, it becomes very hard to do. I've been teaching students in one and twos, but there's nothing like having a platform like this to spread the message. Not like I am the last point on voice culture or anything like that, but to make uh, the message broadly visible and make the community aware of all the resources that are available around us. And uh, as people get to know more and more about this, I'm sure that they'll also want to uh, then take benefit of all the resources around us, not just mine, but everybody else in the community. So thanks for me again. Yeah, most welcome for that. Okay, guys, uh, I see. Uh, first, uh, all of you, as I mentioned in the, um, uh, in the introductory email that I sent out, uh, this is going to be on camera, which means that I need to see you. Uh, because voice culture is not something you can do purely by audio. I have some uh, physical uh, dimension to this. So I ask you all to turn your cameras on so I can see. Hi, Ramya. <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, Shankar and Kartik, you want to turn on? Ah, there you go. Okay. So first, first thing is that you don't need to adjust. There's nothing wrong with your camera. My hair is purple. Um, so in case you're wondering, uh, I, I, my kids dyed it a couple of weeks ago. It was my treat to them for uh, I think Labor Day. It's month ago now. We didn't have any other excitement for the long weekend, so this was what we came up with. So we colored my hair purple. So uh, now that we have that out of the way. Um, there's somebody called iPhone 2. Can you turn the camera on or? Yeah, yeah, it's my, my, uh, my phone, Raj. Oh, you're showing up as Ramya phone also. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the Voice Culture Workshop, as Ramya said. Um, so, I want to bring some sort of basic background to you know, what voice culture is and why we're doing this. Right? So as I mentioned in the email, what we all do, we're all trying to sing. And we sing at various levels. There's no such thing as, okay, you are better than me. Until then. We all sing. We all sing because we enjoy singing. And that's kind of a very basic human thing. But all of us aspire. I think there's no exception to this. All of us aspire, including the late S.P. Balasubramanian, to get better. And so this voice workshop is an effort to help people improve themselves. So I'm not going to teach you, uh, I'm not going to make you better rather, I'm going to teach you or demonstrate to you at the very least how to make yourself better. And the reason I'm bringing this workshop is because a lot of the uh, information that you could have 
is not available easily to you or accessible to you, especially to us in the Indian community, because we are not always as well connected to the other musical traditions of the world as we could be. And so what I'm bringing here is a way to make all those other vast universes of knowledge accessible to us. So we can also benefit from it. And we can also use that to make our singing better. So the first thing is, what is it that we are learning in our music, right? We learn in, at least in the Indian tradition by listening. If we all listen to our teachers, we try to imitate. And that has been the way it has been across the planet for centuries, thousands of years. And that is the basic way, 99.9% .9 of music happens that way. Uh, and it doesn't have to be even any kind of formal training. You just have listened, heard some strain of music on the radio as you pass by, and you sing spontaneously. Right? That is how we all sing. And that is good, but we can do more. And that is what my journey has been. To say, okay, so I learned you know, Carnatic music as a kid, much against my wishes, let me be frank. My parents pushed me into it. I didn't want, but then slowly I got uh, into it. I started enjoying it. And at some point I could not live without it, right? So this is the, the evolution we all go through. We are at different levels in that trajectory. But when I came here, I'll tell you one very um, important event that happened in my life. And maybe some of you have uh, experienced this too. Just some 15 years ago in New Jersey, I had gone to attend a local school football game. And it was a small school. Uh, it did not really have too many, uh, you know, audio systems or, you know, big uh, loudspeakers or anything like that. But you know, no matter what, right, every football game has to start with the national anthem. So this little boy comes up. He stands on the 50-yard line. I'm sitting up in the bleachers, right? the nosebleed seats. Not because I wanted to be there, but because I wanted to see the whole field and to see you know, strategically how the game is played. I was sitting way up there. This kid is down there in the center of the field, and he sings the national anthem. I could hear every single word and note of the singer. I was astounded. How can this little kid sing like this? That way I, that I can sing, you know, I can listen and hear way up there, it's such clarity. So that started a process in me thinking, so how can I get that? And until that point, I had learned Carnatic music for 20 odd years, but then I had not thought about it. Then suddenly this thing hit me. So I started from that day to try and figure out how I can sing better. So for, for another 10 years, nothing happened. Right? I just tried all the things I could. Then a few years ago, I started learning Western classical music, vocal. So I remember the first day I asked the teacher to teach me how to sing. He looked at me and said, Hey, I don't know any Indian classical music. You know, in fact, I don't even listen to Indian classical music. What do you want me to teach you? So I said, I want to learn to sing. He said, but you already know how to sing. What is it that you want to learn? I said, then I told him the same story I told you this time. I, I, I saw that little boy singing like that. I want to sing like him. Without any mic, without any loudspeaker, without any amplification, he sang in a way that carried across the field. How can I sing like that? So he looked at me and smiled. Said, yeah, it's possible. I'm not guaranteeing it, but it's possible. And I was really, truly, I was blessed that he accepted me. You know, most teachers will not accept you. They're not very, uh, you know, who's an Indian guy who wants to learn Western classical? He's too old to learn this. He didn't say any of that. He said, okay, we can try. Then he started teaching me. And I so I told him, you don't need to teach me Carnatic music. That I know. I need to know how to sing, how to use my voice. 
to teach me that. Then he taught me for three years since then, he's been teaching me how to use my voice. So I will tell you now a few principles I've learned in these three years. And I, I now go around and ask each one of you after this, your reaction, your opinion on this. But there are three things essentially that I have learned about singing. Number one, everybody can sing. Unless you have some medical problem, everybody can sing. There is no bad voice, no good voice, nothing like that. Everybody can sing. Right? It's just a matter of training. You just have to know what to do. Most of us don't have the luxury or the, the fortune of learning from some nice teacher who can teach you the right way. But everybody can see. So always believe that. So don't ever think, oh my God, I cannot see. No, you, you hear this kind of a fashionable thing always, right? To say, oh, I don't know how to sing, or I am tone deaf, or well, whatever, any number of excuses people come up with when you ask them to sing. Right? So set that aside, number one. Number two, music, uh, singing should be effortless. Okay, if you're struggling, if you are your throat is hurting, you're doing something wrong. That means you're not using the voice properly. It may, you may not be able to reach every note you want to. That's okay. But if your throat always hurts most of the time in your singing, then you need to learn to sing properly or better. You should never sing to the point when your throat hurts, not at least. Uh, on a sustained basis. And number three, I learned, and this is going back to the question of how did that boy sing like that? Is that being heard, especially being heard in a distant point from where you are, has nothing to do with how loudly you sing. It is this mystery of the human voice that what you actually have to do to be heard is not what you think you need to do. So shouting is actually very, very bad. What you need to do is use the, the voice apparatus that you have been given, you have been blessed with. Use that to the maximum extent. And when you learn how to use that, you can be heard very far differently. Of course, there are changes. You know, everybody has a unique voice. I'm not saying that everybody will sound alike. Everybody, we're all, there are five billion people on the planet with five billion voices. We're all different. So it's not like, I, you know, you should sound like her or you should sound like me or anybody else. It is your voice you have to find. But your voice can be truly beautiful. And the whole exercise here is to find the beautiful voice of yours. Right? To, to remove all these impediments that you have. So that's the only lecture I'm going to give you in the whole workshop. After this, we're only going to talk about exercises, things you can do, things I'm going to make you do. So before I get into the uh, exercises, I want to hear from each one of you, what is the, what are two things that you want to do with your work? Okay, so I, I'll right off the bat uh, tell you what I um, I want to do with my voice, so that you get an example of what it is that I'm looking for. And I'll also tell you one answer that is not acceptable, is, which I want to sing better. You all want to sing better. So that's not a good enough reason. I want you to think about two things, specific things that you'd like to improve. In your voice. So I will start with mine. So there are two things I'd like um, most. This is after having spent three years doing this. So it is still work in progress, right? So the two top things for me are to be able to sing seamlessly. So when I go up and down the scale, I don't want my voice to change. Okay? This may sound very technical to you. But as we get into the workshop, I'll tell you what that actually means and how to get it done. The second thing I want to do is I want to improve my resonances. 
I'll explain to you also what improving vocal resonance means. But it means that you saw, when you have a resonant voice, it sounds sweet. It's something, some, something about the human uh, brain that we like resonant voices. We don't like discordant voices. We don't like people. Sometimes you can hear people, their voice seems to fracture or you know, some grating sound to it. That's because it's not fully resonant. And so that those are my two things. So how to make improve my resonance and how to improve my uh, seamlessness. So those are my um, two things that I want to improve. So I want to ask each one of you to first introduce yourself. Tell me just briefly what kind of background you have, you know, whether you have learned music. It doesn't matter if you don't. Passion is sometimes more than enough uh, for these kinds of things. And then the answer to this question, what are two things you'd like to learn to do better? Okay, how should I start? I'll go with this uh, list that... Um, Email? Am I... Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to see. <laughs> um, okay, let's start with the way it's showing the... Um, okay, how about um, uh, Ramya Rao? Can you start us off please? Uh, hello everyone. Good evening. So um, my name is Ramya and uh, I'm a trained uh, classical singer. Uh, and what I would like to do with my voice, uh, maybe I would, I would like to uh, give it more strength. Uh, because um, as Raj sir said, uh, it's, it's not very uh, easy to be singing and, uh, you know, keep the throat, I mean, keep the voice uh, in place and you're basically my throat I don't want my throat to hurt after uh, singing for some time so yeah so basically singing effortlessly and um, yeah I just want to try and make my uh, voice more versatile uh, to sing try, you know to try and sing as many kinds of songs as possible mm -hmm. very good uh, and you said you're trained what are you trained in uh, Carnatic classical mm -hmm. okay yeah. Yes. Thank you. Welcome, Ramya. So you have hit the point. Yes, uh, those are very central issues with voice culture, how to sing, sing strongly and how to be able to sing all sorts of things, right? Because one of the things that our voice is able to do uniquely better than any other instrument in the world is display a range of emotion. Right? You, can, you can sound angry, you can sound sad, you can sound happy, you can sound funny. All these things somehow mysteriously come into our voice and we communicate that to other um, people. And music is about being able to amplify those and be able to do that, all that uh, in, a, in a melodious way. Right? So, thank you. Uh, thank you Arpana, Arpana, Arpana? Hi, my name is Arpana. Um, I've been learning music for like eight years now. Carnatic music and two things I want to improve on are I can't I can't sing mandara style without it hurting like when I go lower it's not my strong point so I want to improve on that upper style is fine but it's says mandara style is hard for me to sing at my shruti and another thing is uh when I'm singing like movie songs the emotion like the feel that the singer gives doesn't I can't really copy that per se uh, I'm just singing like the song and my parents are like that's that's not how you sing it <laughs> and I'm like well how do you want me to sing it <laughs> I'm singing <laughs> so I just, I want to bring like that feeling as you said I want to convey the emotion the actual singer was trying to co convey yeah. excellent well articulated um, I think you're absolutely right um, the this this is myth somehow, especially in Carnatic music, that we always focus on the high notes, how to hit the high notes. But hitting the lower notes is just as important. And somehow we don't pay that much attention to the low notes. So for me, you know, one of the things I try to do is try not to look at this as high and low, but just sideways. So if you go right, you get the high notes, you go left, you get the lower notes. Yeah. And you should not think of, you know, climbing up a ladder or going down into the dungeon or something like that, because that is not how the voice works. So we have lots of psychological issues with how we visualize the way we're singing. And sometimes those 
I can hinder progress. So definitely, we'll definitely talk about how to hit the low marks. Good job. Thank you. Uh, Aryaman, uh, you're on mute. Too. Aryaman, can you hear us? Oh, yes, Uncle. Sorry. I'm so sorry, sir. Um, I thought you put someone else. Okay. Um, I just, I really want to get, what I really want to get out of this is a much better voice because right now I'm going through voice change since I'm about 13 years old. Um, and I really want to like interact with other people and see their standpoints of music. Um, and same as Arpana, uh, I also get that issue when, when I sing that uh, I can't really bring the feel into it. So um, I want to work on that too. Um, and I want to work on my Carnatic music as well so that I can do uh, really well in the future. Um, yeah. And, and what, what is your background have you learned? To... Um, I've been learning Carnatic music for about seven years. Um, I started with uh, Sri Murli Bhatt, uh, and now I um, learn from the teacher in uh, my homeland, Kerala. Um, so yeah, uh, mostly Carnatic music started learning in this family, so. Yeah, so, yeah, the voice change is, you know, one of the things that, you know, life hunters and we have to deal with. Don't worry about it. And everybody will tell you this, don't worry about it. But it is a problem, and I've been through that too. And um, yeah, it was painful when it was happening. So it takes some forbearance and patience to get past it. But I can, I can, you know, uh, you know, biological things we cannot change, obviously. But to the module of that, I can I can help you with all the other things that you ask. Sorry, ma'am, I can't see your name on this. Is it there on this one? Oh, uh, Anita, are you are you referring? Are you uh, thinking of the email there that's showing up? Yes. Okay. So, hi, hi, Raj. I'm uh, Anita Rangaswamy. And uh, I'm not sure why the email is showing up. There's some other setting, I guess, because it normally yeah. shows up with my name. It's but showing up with from me at cox.net. Yes, yeah. that's what I noticed. And I said uh, that maybe that's how I logged in today. But um, so my mm, so my name is Anita Rangaswamy. First of all, I have to tell you that I am uh, not in the age group, the recommended age group that is here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I saw the, uh, uh, I saw this, I keep getting these Yara messages and I thought, um, I texted uh, Ramya back and I said, you know, this sounds interesting. I have never formally learned. So in terms of a background, I have never had the opportunity to learn formally uh, Carnatic music for sure. Um, the, and I, because I've never been in areas in India where uh, I could have learned. It was always in the north or somewhere else. And we were, my father being in the army, we moved a lot. So uh, never got to learn, even though I was very interested in learning. Uh, so, uh, but I did have the opportunity to learn some kind of Western uh, singing in the choir and things like that when I was younger mm -hmm. in a convent school. So I've done a little bit of that, but I do enjoy music and I love singing and I just hum it or do something like that. So I thought this would be a good, uh, you know, just a workshop to see how, you know, the, because they talked about breathing patterns and things like that. And I said, oh, yeah, and I'm a yoga teacher, by the way. And so I do teach. I've been teaching kids in the valley. We've been here, we've been here for over 30 years now. So uh, I've been teaching kids in the valley. I haven't seen any of these kids, but I've, I've seen Aryaman actually at some other event. Good to see you again, Aryaman. And um, that I'm involved with youth um, in different I've been involved with youth for many, for all these decades, actually. I do enjoy working with, uh, with the children in different ways. So in terms of Carnatic music, my background is zero, actually. And, uh, um, but I'm, I'm open to learning things and I, I try to check out things as I go, as I go about. Um, and I like to think. So what, what, are, what am I looking what, what, I'm sorry? What are the two things you'd like to get out of this workshop? Yes, so I think, um, as I was thinking about that, I think one of them is to, um, is to first of all, un understand, given my own voice, where it is in, in the range of, you know, 
notes and things like that because I don't think I've even checked that out ever. Um, I just want to know, and, and then when people talked of going high and low and things like that, I do go high and low as far as I can tell, but I don't know if it's technically correct or anything because I've never been uh, given any feedback, so to speak. So I'd love to, I'd love to know, you know, where I am in that whole range of uh, uh, notes and things like that. And um, because, well, like I said, when I went, I was in, in um, primary school is when I was singing in the choir and things like that, but that was a long time ago. So nothing since then. But I, like I said, I, I do enjoy singing music. Welcome uh, to Abel's Mubar here. Um, this is, I think, something that is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a recommendation. It's not a hard rule uh, that you should be on the day. So, at least I, I welcome the diversity because you know singing is for everybody. It's not mm -hmm. just for trained or the untrained or uh, young or old. And sometimes having somebody who is a, older give, brings an interesting perspective into some of the the challenges we have with singing. Singing is not as straightforward and simple as people think. It's not hugely complicated, but it's also not as simple. And so having different people from different walks of life actually helps the conversation. Yeah, and, and most people start very young, especially with Carnatic music or any kind of music. And my children have learned piano and they've learned since they were five years old, three years old, actually. So, uh, yeah, so that, look at them. They're all like, they're in the teens, they said they already learned for seven or eight years. So they, they, exactly. And they're, that's what I'm saying. So I was just telling them yes, two days ago when I saw some of them, the other kids, I said, you know, it's like my kids, I, taking them for um, piano class and they started when they were three and four. So it's, it's a journey. And so um, I, don't, I don't think I'm late on the ball. I just want to know more about, uh, you know, where I am in this whole gamut of uh, music and that's it. I just, I just want to enjoy this uh, as many of these sessions that I can attend. Okay. So. Uh, you're on mute. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hi, my name is Shreya. Um, my background is mostly in Carnatic music. I've I've been learning it for uh, like maybe nine or ten years, um, but I've changed teachers a lot. So I really you started getting. I've learned for nine or ten years. How old are you? Uh, I'm sixteen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I look a lot younger, but I'm sixteen. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I actually like really started getting into it three to four years ago though. So it's not like, I don't know, um, it feels like I've learned for a shorter time. So, yeah. And, and um, what, what do you really like to get out of it? Um, well, okay. So for me, I'm just, I'm kind of like a quiet person. So I think one thing I really need to improve on is volume, uh, okay. like volume and strength sort of. Yeah. Um, and also just like range, like going high and low, my voice tends to like thin out a little bit and I'm not able to hit the notes very well. So. Okay, that, those are very, very good um, goals. To say, you know, the in all these kinds of exercises, the more precise your goals are, the better you know your, what you want, the more you get out of it. So, so it's good to have that kind of um, clarity. I mean, I hope you get more than that out of the workshop, but definitely we'll make sure that you know, those two things are uh, In fact, it is part of you know, the program for the next five days, so we will come to that. But I want to remember it so that when we come to those particular pass um, um, spots in the workshop that we'll pay specific attention to your needs and try and amplify it. Okay, uh, Shankar and Kartik, who wants to go first? Hey guys, can you load the... Uh, Camera a little bit looks like I'm speaking to your window. Ah, there you go. Okay, who wants to go first? Uh, I'll just I'll go ahead. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. Shankar. Uh, I'm uh, I've been trained in Hindustani and Carnatic vocal music, uh, and I'd like to improve on my range, just overall, just lower and higher, and also the the how I change between uh, my the voices that I use in, in the lower. Uh, lower scales and the higher scales, just blending those together to create like a cohesive kind of uh, voice. Like to work mm -hmm. on. Yeah, definitely. That is something that 
I think um, is not talked about in Indian music a lot. Um, somehow musicians, the good ones, figure it out, but you know, they don't necessarily teach it to you. And then they let you figure it out yourself. So for sure, we call registration. We'll try. It. We'll talk about how to change between registries. Okay, welcome. And Karthik. I'm Karthik, and um, I've been learning Hindustani and Carnatic music uh, for the past like nine or ten years, I guess. And um, I want to focus on like uh, being less nasal when I sing, and uh, I want to improve on my range lower. Okay. So welcome, Karthik. Yes, uh, I noticed that since I last talked to you, your voice has dropped. So, so that's significant. And yeah, we're all, I know how it is to be in that spot when the voice is a new thing to you. <laughs> the thing that you thought you owned is suddenly not yours. Welcome. We will work on this and uh, figure out how to uh, you know, help you with, uh, with the range issues. And what is the second? I forgot. What is the second thing you said? To like improve on my range lower and, and, the and the nasal part of it. Okay. Yeah, for sure. We, we will definitely deal with that. Too. Okay, so I think that rounds it up. Is there anybody else on the call that I'm not seeing who'd like to speak up? No? Okay, all right. Um, all right, so thanks everyone for your. Wonderful introductions. Um, this is, this hit the spot. This is exactly what I wanted to hear from you. Clearly, you have paid, you know, you have at least read my introduction. So at least it feels like you are responding to some of the you know, points I've written in the description of the workshop. So thank you very much for that. Okay, from this point on, we are going to dive into the various aspects of voice culture, and I'm not going to, uh, you know differentiate between Carnatic music or Hindustani music or film music or Western music. Music is music. Singing is singing. I'll show you that it does not matter what you want to sing. It's all about how to use your voice. Okay? You can use the same voice and don't believe anybody who tells you, oh, this is how this is how voice culture is for Westerners. You don't need that. It's, that's not true at all. Uh, voice culture is not some, some mysterious thing. It's just a simple question of using your voice the best you can with the least amount of effort and to sound as good as you can. And all the uh, differences you hear between, say, an operatic voice and a Carnatic voice or a Hindustani voice or a, a Bollywood voice is all very small differences in the way we use our voice in our practice. And we do that for a reason, and I'll get to that uh, as we get into the workshop. So before I get any further, is there anybody here who cannot come for all five days? Uh, Raj sir, I, uh, sorry, uh, please go ahead. Okay, uh, so uh, I am not sure if I'll be able to make it to all, uh, all the uh, workshop sessions uh, because mm -hmm. I'm working and uh, I'm if in case my uh, supervisor does schedule meetings uh, then I'll not be able to make it. Yeah, yeah, we're all in that boat. Yeah, <laughs> or, not to worry. So uh, the other question was: uh, Are you all in Phoenix, in the Phoenix area, or some of you are elsewhere? Phoenix. Yeah. Phoenix? Very good. At least we are in the same time zone. We don't have to worry about you know, being late. Or, or okay. Very good. Okay, so there are essentially, I've broken this, this um, uh, aspect of voice control training into five topics, which you might have seen in the description of the workshop. So I've tried to build it so that you can start at the basics first, and then the second and third part will build on what you learned in the first part and so on. So there is some sequence to it, but it's not completely um, sort of locked in that you cannot do the third part if you're not doing the second, right? nothing like that. So starting with the most important and basic aspects which we do not learn in Indian music, which I had to learn by the way, uh, late in life, is breathing. Right? So breath is the first essential step to singing. And a lot of times this basic thing is um, sort of ignored because the way we teach, our pedagogy is just sing like me. I will sing, you want to sing. But the problem with that is 
you can't see the internals of your teacher. You don't know how they are using their voice, uh, how they are bringing up the, the energy, how they are uh, manipulating their lungs, their you know, vocal passages, their resonance ca cavities, and so on. So the, the main job in this workshop will be to teach you to think about all those things that are left unsaid. So um, first, hold on. The first step is breathing. And the first thing that you, the first thing you learn is that, okay, so this breathing is actually essential to many, if not all the things that you guys have asked about. So breathing is essential for good singing, meaning not only sounding good, but also for range, believe it or not. You may think that what has breath got to do with anything, but breath has everything to do with singing up and down the range. Breathing has to do also with um, uh, the nas nasality, right? So a lot of times we think we're nasal, but it's not because of, you know, we're using our nose, but because sometimes we're using our breath wrong. And the most important thing to know is that there's a special way to breathe for singing. People perhaps figure it out as they sing, all these professionally trained people. But I have never seen uh, any Indian teachers teach you how to breathe. So I'm going to show you that is what I know. First, you should take everything with a pinch of salt. Everything should be testable. So you should go out and verify for yourself with your own experience. Ask other people. But I'll tell you what I know. Okay. So breathing, right? So the most... Um, the damaging thing we do to ourselves in singing is breathe like this. So I want you to do so. Can uh, see Ramya and Arpana, can you lower your uh, camera a little bit so I can see a little bit of your portion? Ah, there you go. Ramya, can you? Ah, there you go. Good. So all of you take a deep breath and hold it. Okay, you can release now. Um, okay, hey, Karthik, I can't quite see you too, too down. Can you either you rise up or lower the camera? Okay. So this is what you guys did when you breath. Um, you took a deep breath, you did this. This is the absolute wrong way to breathe for singing. Right? It, it may or may not be wrong for other things, but it does not help you while singing. So the first thing you have to learn to do differently in singing is what is called singing, uh, breathing with your stomach. So I'm sure all of you have heard, because you're all in some way South Indian, heard, you know, Carnatic music, whatever, that people would have said, oh, singing from the Nabi, from your navel. Right? Have you heard that? Have you heard some older person say that? Have you wondered what that you need? Yeah, so in, in yoga, so in yoga, not to interrupt here, but in yoga class, I used to tell my children, the children that came to me, to breathe exactly through the stomach because that is when you can, the diaphragm is rising and lowering. Right, right. But yeah. I'll let you explain that, yeah. So so for, for a long time, I didn't understand what does it mean to sing from the Nabi because there is no voice stuff in your stomach. Right? What, what on earth could it mean to sing from your stomach? So it took me all these years to figure out what this means. What it means is that you breathe with your stomach and you sing based on that breath that you're using, pumping in and out with your stomach. So you, in, in your entire singing, your shoulder should not move. Right? It can move fractionally, but never like this. Okay? So the first thing is breathing, taking these long lungfuls of breath is actually very inefficient. Right? That's number one. So we have to stop at some point. It won't happen overnight. Uh, you know, break the habit of breathing like this. Right? It's called clavicular breathing. Right? Second thing is, it actually takes very little air to sing. We all have this. You know, I'm sure you've seen artists and we have felt it ourselves when you suddenly singing and singing and singing out of the and then you sing some more. 
it is absolutely the worst thing you can do. Right? So in today's class, I'm going to teach you how to not do that, but still sing. You can sing long passages without ever having to heave like this. Okay, so then the question is, how do we do that? So what does the stomach breathing or breathing with your diaphragm mean? Okay, so there are all kinds of names for this, but I'll tell you effectively you know, what this means. So I want you guys to, um, to do this. Uh, push your shoulders back and down. Okay, not, not huge pressure, but just back and down and relax it over there. And now I want you to breathe, whichever way you want to breathe, but try to not move your shoulder. Okay? Take a breath now. And hold. And release. Okay, so this is the, this is the uh, limitation of Zoom, but from what I can tell, you guys are doing well. You're, you're not, you didn't, some people simply cannot avoid lifting their shoulders. If I tell them don't move your shoulder, they will move your shoulder, right? I've had those, but you guys are not that, so that's good. So this is the feeling that you got. You have to remember the feeling. This is how it should always be. All the way through, so even when you're running out of breath or you feel like you're gasping, your shoulder should not come up. Okay? Because it's a habit thing. So a lot of these things are habit for me. And so we want to generate good habits, just like your bad habits, you want to generate good habits so that even involuntarily you don't do that. So this will take some time to do. So I'm going to teach you now an exercise in how to know that you are um, uh, controlling your breath. So the first thing is how to not only breathe with your stomach, but also control your breath with your stomach while singing. That is the difficult part. If I tell you, yeah, Breathe with your stomach, you can all do that a thousand times because you're not doing anything else. The trick is how to do that while you're singing. Right? So this is what you need to do. So exercise number one. We're going to take a breath, like I said, shoulders down and back, fill up your um, stomach, and you will see that your stomach comes out. So don't be worried about it. There'll be, by the way, lots of weird exercises I'm going to teach you. And you would feel like, my God, what is this got to do with singing? But believe me, all these affect singing. Even though they don't seem to have any direct connection to singing, these are all about uh, helping the muscles that go into singing. So the first step you're going to do now is how to uh, uh, activate the muscles in your belly so that you know what it feels like to breathe with your stomach while you're singing. So this is the, the exercise. So we're going to do this. We're going to take a breath with your shoulders down as much as you can. And then you're going to release the uh, air slowly under pressure. Like you're going to use the word like that. Okay. So all the, there's nothing magical about this sound. It's just that it releases air slowly because you're putting pressure on the release. And you're going to uh, then stop. Then take a breath again. And then go. Stop. And every time I want you to do this. First time I want you to do this for a count of four. Then second time count of six. Then a count of eight. Okay, and I'm going to count. Then you can give this. If you can't, if you cannot do it, fine. There's no penalty. But I want you to do this exercise with me. Okay, so everybody take a breath. Release, one, two, three, four. Breathe in. Do, you have to, do, I'm counting, so you have, you don't look at me, so you have to, that's four. Then, six. So I'm going, to, so we do the three things, okay? All right, so let's start again. Everybody take a deep breath, lower your shoulders. Sit up straight and on the count. Breathe in. Out. 
hold, breathe in. Hold and relax. So by the time you get to the eight, you get to that sensation of, oh my God, I need air in my lungs now, right? And so what you have to do is fight that, that sensation to the urge to immediately stop and start sucking air in. Because until you do that, you will not be able to sing long passages of, of singing without you know, stopping. You, you might have seen, especially young children, when they're singing some long passage, they'll go, ah, and then they stop, and then they'll continue, ah, like that, right? So that's because they've not been taught that you don't sing like that. Okay, so this, this idea that you have to breathe with restriction, exhale with restriction, is an ancient, apparently old Western technique called Farinelli breathing, where you will, what uh, the advanced version of this is, so I, I told you now, four, six, eight. The more advanced version of it is, you don't go do this, but hold. Do not breathe in. Do another four. Hold. Then again, one, two, three, four, like that. Keep doing that and see how long you can go. There are people who can do this for a whole week. That's a story. even I can in a way far than what I can do, but we can try you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds because this is the muscle training you need for singing with proper breath. Because then you're doing two things you are not allowing the shoulders to come up. The second is we are getting used to the sensation of letting out air in a slow, restricted manner over an extended period of time. And so what will happen is when you sing, you'll use only the amount of air, even less than the air that you use in the sound. And so when you do that, it will help you sing long passages without having to heave up and down. Okay, so let's do this one more time. So let's try and see how much, I mean, I'm not making it a competition. I want you guys to see how far you can go, how many counts of four you can do and keep your breath. And the whole thing is it's invalid if at the end of it you go, <laughs> you cannot do that. You can stop and you can breathe with your shoulders down, right? It's the end of, say, you did 10 times four, and then you heave, then follow this. Okay, so let's start. Uh, I, I'll start the count and then you can tell me how far you can, you can last. So don't, don't put too much pressure on yourself. I'm not trying to kill you here with the exercise. Just get used to this sensation. Again, you'll take a deep breath with the shoulders down, fill your lungs as much as you can. And then do this sound for four, Hold one second, four again, hold one second, four again, like that. And see how far you can go before you have to stop. That's it. Okay, so let's start. Breathe in. And go. Okay, how far did you get? Seven. Seven? Oh, very good. You have a good breath control. Uh, what about the rest of the body? Eight. Uh, okay. Anybody else? It's okay, don't be shy. It's okay. This is only the first day. How far did you get? Kartik? Lot count? Uh, okay, very good. So, so, so this is the very first step to singing is how to breathe with control. 
So there's this huge universal how to bring it into this, just the very first few basic stuff. We, we need to master this. So one of the things I'd ask you to do is after this workshop today, when you go you know, doing anything, you're walking, or traveling, or whatever, you can do this at random points. See how long you can keep your breath going like this. And the more you can constrict, the better, because then you can hold the breath longer. Because if when you get this urge to breathe in, it's not real. There's plenty of air in your lungs. It's just that you feel because you're so used to breathing, you know, in a, in a pumping ma manner that we get this psychological sensation that we need to breathe again. So this is like exactly like swimming, right? If you have, uh, you know, learned to swim, I learned as an adult, so I remember this very well. You kids probably learned long ago, they don't remember, that when you are swimming and you're out of breath, you panic and then you, you uh, put your mouth out of the water and you suck in the lung full and then you swim again. Actually, then the coach will tell you, don't do that. Don't, don't suck in air like that and swim again because it'll actually tire you and you will not get all the air you need. You actually need to breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly in swimming. So in, in, in singing, you need to breathe in slowly and the breathe out will happen when you're singing. That's the only difference. So we need control in both directions. Most of the time we are somehow trained to control the intake. We are not trained to control the exhale. So this exercise is about controlling the exhale. Okay, so the next exercise I'm going to show you is kind of, you might think it's a bit bizarre. And uh, normally I would do it uh, lying down on the ground, but this camera is not going to catch it. But I'll, I'll describe this um, exercise to you and you can do that in, in your leisure. So you, what you do is, you take a book like this. Yeah, it doesn't matter what book is, you're not going to read it. Just a book that is heavy enough. You're going to breathe in, keep this book on your stomach. And see how long you can hold it up. Okay. So that's the exercise to figure out how you can control your stomach muscles because the control of the belly muscles is vital for singing. If you have weak abdominal core muscles, then the two things happen. One is you will slouch. The second is you will not be able to keep the diaphragm free to move up and down as it needs to. So what I'm going to do is instead show you the vertical version of this. Okay, I, I guarantee you it's much harder. This is, what, this is the exercise that my teacher taught me, but you can try the easy version later on uh, lying down on, your, on the floor, on your back, and this on your back. But instead, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this on my belly and stand against the wall. The book will want to fall down. And I have to hold the book against the wall with my stomach. Okay, I'm going to show you. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to hold this with my stomach. I'm going to breathe in, let my stomach expand, and I'm going to hold it in place. Hold it. And see how long it will hold it. The moment my stomach weakens, it will start to slip down. Right? So this is an exercise to strengthen your stomach muscle. And it may sound simple. When you try to do it, you will discover how difficult it is. But the more interesting part of it is you have to sing with this book against the wall. Sing anything you want, anything you have learned, anything that you, you like. Keep the book on your stomach, face the wall or on the ground. And you sing a passage, whatever uh, short passage you want to sing without the book moving. 
Okay, so this keeps your belly from collapsing when you sing. So that's the other thing you have to do. You have to make sure that you use your belly and when you breathe, your belly will come out. But alternately also, when you lose, when you sing, the belly should not get sucked in. <gasps> uh, right? So this is the, the, the two parts. One is to keep the, uh, the uh, belly distended to keep the book in place, forward pressure, and also preventing release so that you keep uh, the, the belly in control. So you are in control. So this gives you, this trains your brain to control that belly while you're singing. Normally we never do that, right? Normally we sit, we don't pay attention to any lower part of the body at all. It's all here and there and that's it. So this is a way to exercise and gain control or the lower half of the body. Okay, so, so this is the, the most important um, aspect of breath control. There's a lot more I can go on and on like this. But let me stop here and see what you guys think of this. What, what are your thoughts and reactions? So, uh, am I on mute? No, no uh, I can do okay. yeah. so, uh, so these uh, exercises that you're talking about, I want to let the other participants know as well that it, it's very useful because as a yoga teacher, in fact, when I was teaching the kids as well as the adults, uh, I used to emphasize this and have specific exercises that are yogic breathing exercises that you can do. And I would tell them exactly that if you're learning music and which many kids who came there learned music, whether it was Hindustani or Carnatic, and they also went for Bharatnatyam lessons. Mm -hmm. but it was for both, for stamina as well as for this. So if you have the opportunity to do yoga or something, which I see that Ramya auntie has some yoga classes as well, uh, you should probably consider that because I think that is going to help as well. I don't know what level, what they teach or anything, but uh, yoga definitely is something that will help you in terms of the breathing and, you know, working through all of the breath patterns, etc. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes sometime maybe, I don't know, I'll have to talk to Ramya and see if there are enough kids that are interested, you know, I might do something, something related like this, you know, which is totally breath focused because I think it will really help kids too. So this is a great... Uh, great thing that you're teaching, you know, with uh, the breath for this. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think, uh, rest of you? Um, does it sound like something you might want to do? Yeah? You know, or are you just shaking so you can get rid of me? Okay. So, I'll tell you one uh, sort of teaser. I'm going to move on to the next topic. But So, for every such I want to teach you the basic and give you one advanced technique that I will just give you a teaser for that you'll have to go and find out and do yourself. Or come and catch me sometime later and I'll teach you. But that is like this. So, uh, the, let's see if I can lower this camera so you can see my stuff. I'm going to sit sideways. Okay. Oh, I, and I, I one, one thing I forgot to tell you. So posture is very important in singing, right? The biggest problem we face is that we sing sitting down. Sitting down has this problem that when we sit on the floor, our stomach, if you're not completely erect, that your stomach is crunched like this. But if this is where the diaphragm is moving, it's very hard to sing with full power. So I used to have trouble all the time because I, this is how I grew up singing. And when these teachers started telling me, oh, you need to move your diaphragm, I did not know what to do. I went back to my yoga teacher and said, sir, I'm having this problem. He said, oh, don't you know the basic thing about sitting? I don't know. He said this, every time you sing, find a pillow. Huh? Put it on under your butt, but you don't sit on the pillow. You sit on the edge of the pillow. So your butt is barely on the pillow. Your knees have to go below your hips towards the ground. This way, it, it rotates your hips down so that it releases this part of your body 
to move as it, it likes. Okay? It's not perfect. It's not as good as standing up. But it's better than sitting on the floor without this. So sitting with a platform, but not... So the, the mistake I used to make was I used to have my knees, my entire uh, sitting posture on top of the pillow. That's useless. The trick is you keep the butt on the pillow, your knees on the ground or lower than the pillow. That's what gives you this additional uh, leverage that you need to use to sing. Okay, all right. So that said, let me continue. Okay. So here is how breathing with your stomach looks like. Right? So when I, when I keep my shoulders down and I breathe, you can see how my stomach distends. You can see? Okay, now what you cannot see is that not only is my stomach distending, but if you take, if you do this well enough, in fact, the whole circle around here, everything will distend. So try it yourself. Try, try take a deep breath with your shoulders down and, and see if you can feel your ribs also kind of going out in, in addition to your belly. Yeah, do you feel it? So this is one of those things where it's very hard to do on a Zoom class. If you guys mm -hmm. are sitting in front of me, I could tell you exactly mm -hmm. how. Okay, now, the advanced trick that I was going to tease you with is this. When you're really a master at this, what you end up doing is this. You take a deep breath and cause those ribs to expand sideways. And you keep them there. You do not let those ribs go back in. And you might wonder, you know, how am I going to breathe if you do that? Right? I also thought that. So it turns out that you need so little breath for singing that a small movement in your diaphragm is enough for all the singing you'll ever do. So you can actually keep this elevated, this, the ribs uh, expanded, and create this big uh, belly, pot belly, and make it permanent the whole time you see it's actually possible so you can you can just do microscopic movements in your belly you can do your singing one day i'll show you how you can do it but it's hard to show this on this camera but it is possible and that's when you know that you have mastered the art of belly breathing for singing right when these ribs the back everything remains distended your shoulders are completely relaxed. They are not part of this at all. And you can sing, and you can sing for a long period of time like this. Now, the thing about it is, when you try and do that in the beginning, for me, your stomach, will, your muscles will cramp. And that's because you're not used to this. It's just like you're, you're working any physical muscle, right? So, they're not used to supporting your back like this. And so they are, they're going to complain. So for a long time, when I started doing this with my vocal teacher, I felt terrible, terribly sore some of muscles. But today I don't feel anything. So I can't even remember what it was like before I started doing this. Okay? So that's the most important thing. And one thing I should tell you, in addition to sitting on this like this, Yes, when you sit up, imagine that there is a hook tied to the top of your head and reach for the sky to your head. Okay? So that way you will not do this. There's no way you can do this and reach for the sky. Yeah? But remember, I'm not raising my shoulder. I'm not doing it like this. I am reaching to the top of my head. Okay, but the top of my head, not my nose. So I'm not doing this. My, my chin is level, only my head is risen, but by pulling yourself up by a bootstrap, so to speak, up to the sky, you create more space for you in this region. So when you sing in this, the stomach region will free up even more for you to, to use. And the more air you have, the louder you can sing. Isn't that funny? So if you, if you see all the great um, singers who have really 
huge volume voice is like uh, Bhimshan Joshi said. If you see closely how they're sitting in the scene, right? They're almost like you know, wrestler stance. So they're sitting like this. And they are pushing down into the ground with their butt. Right? Leaning a little bit forward. And that's how they sing the whole time. You don't see them singing like this or like this or like this. Right? They're, they're up like this, leaning a bit forward. The leaning forward is not necessary. But you know, that's what they do, I know this. And, and, and so the whole point is singing is a physical activity. Your whole body participates in the singing. It's not just here. So the other thing that uh, you should realize when it's breath is that, okay, so the vocal cord is somewhere here, okay? They're not connected to your um, food pipe except through its acidic, right? You know all that. So when we uh, sing, I'll ask you a question. Why do you drink water? Everybody drinks water. I do that too. Anything is going on. If we all we need for singing is breath, what's the water doing? Anybody? Okay, so it's like this. So you have the, the, the mouth here. There are two pipes. One is the foot pipe, which is in the back. And then the other is the wind pipe, that is in the front. Right? There's an epiglottis that blocks food from going into the wind pipe. When you're singing, obviously the wind pipe opens up and the air comes out like this and goes out your mouth. Okay? When you drink water, this thing closes, water comes out this way. Why do you drink water? What do you want to do for you? Anybody really want to guess? The answer is not much. It's just a feeling you get you know, when you sing that our, our thoughts are getting dry. But drinking the water makes the feeling of the dry throat go away. It does nothing for your singing. Because the vocal cords are below the epiglottis, so you cannot push the water there. If you were, you aspirate and start coughing. However, water is very essential to singing. So, so every day I'll give you one tip. So this is today's tip. Any time you have to sing at a performance, doesn't matter, concert, some program, you have to drink an excess of water beforehand. Two days before that program, you have to start drinking water and you drink so much water that you're tired of drinking water. You go to the bathroom so many times that you're tired of going to the bathroom. Why? Because you need water for the vocal cord, but that doesn't happen by drinking uh, directly. What happens is the body absorbs the water and then it distributes the water into all the organs, including the vocal cord. So you have to super hydrate to get your vocal cord wet and moist so that singing is easy. So remember this, next time you have a program, two days before it starts in drinking water. Drink and drink and drink and drink as much as you can. Your body gets saturated with water and then your vocal cords will also have water. When you do that, and I tell you from personal experience, you will not feel thirsty during the program. You will not feel the urge to keep drinking chugging water. Okay? All right. So I'm going to move on to the next topic. So let me pause here and see what, what kind of thoughts you have. There are only 15 minutes left, so I, I don't want to spend too much time, but any questions? Yeah. No? Okay. So homework for today is I want you to do this breathing exercise I told you, the shh sound. I want you to do it at least 10 times in a row. And each time I want you to do this uh, 
count for four, stop. Don't take a breath in count. Four, until you completely out of breath. Take a normal breath in. And then do the sound again. I want you to do this 10 times in a row because that's how, by doing it for a prolonged period of time, it trains your brain to understand that you don't need to heave and take air. In. Okay? All right. So are we ready for the next topic? This topic has to do with something that uh, I think uh, Shankar said, which is what is called voice registration. That is how to go smoothly from the bottom to the top without any change. So this has basically have to do with how do you use your voice to sing? Okay? So I don't know how it will be for you, but I discovered personally that everything that I had learned by way of singing was wrong. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what I've learned in terms of using your voice. Now that you, once you've learned how to breathe, next question is how to use your voice. Okay, so how to use your voice on top of this breathing. Now, this is a an enormous topic, you know, how to use your voice, because different cultures use their voices differently. And what we do in Carnatic music or Hindustan music is nearly what we have learned by imitating uh, others around us. Right? So it's, think of it like an accent. Why do people have accents in this field? Because they imitate the people around them. Right? Kids grow up in America, have an American accent. Same kids, the same Indian kids, if they were born in India and grew up there, they would have an Indian accent. So the way they use their voice is like an accent. There's nothing right or wrong about it, but it is different. Right? So this famous singer Hari Haran, in one of the interviews, he said that the way we use our voices actually is very much related to the way we speak. And he said something like this. So when you speak English, and I speak English, I say, I speak in this tone. Hello, how are you? When I speak Tamil, my tone rises up. Hello, everything eh? This is how he explained it too. That somehow we use different tones for different languages. Well, I could have said it in the, in the low tone, even for even for Tamil, but I don't. Somehow when I speak in Tamil, I think I should raise my voice. Why is that? This is cultural, culturally acquired. So so much so that when I hear my kids here speak Tamil. It sounds different, even though they're speaking the same words. It's not just accent, it's also tonality. My kids speak Tamil in a lower note than their cousins in India. And this affects the way we sing. The way we speak very much affects the way we sing. So the first thing, the basic thing about voice after breathing is to disconnect the speaking from the singing. Okay, so we should we can all sing irrespective of how we speak. Right? Even you know they tell you, right? Even people who have speech impediments can sing, right? People who have started can sing, sing perfectly. So these things don't need to be connected, don't need, they're not kind of interlocked the way uh, we think they are. So I'm going to teach you how to slightly disconnect your speaking voice from your singing voice. So what does it mean to now to sing like this, okay? So the first thing I'm going to teach you is this. So we're going to take this breath, right? Okay? Just by the way, it's called breath support to keep this pot belly. And I'm going to ask each one of you to sing a note. You can pick whatever note you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And we're going to sing that note while keeping this pot belly. Yeah. And see how it feels inside your head. Um, when you do that, so let me let me start off first. Okay, so I'm going to take this breath, make my pot belly. Uh, Is 
don't have to hold it that long, but I'm showing you without taking another breath. So see how you can sing while keeping that pot belly, keeping your shoulders down and sing a note of your choice. Doesn't matter, doesn't have to be my note, right? All of you have different ranges. So who wants to go first? I don't want to embarrass anybody. So. Okay, I'm going to pick randomly then. Okay, uh, Shreya, sing me a note. Doesn't matter. Don't don't be don't be shy. I know you're. You told me you're shy, but okay. Here is a place not to be shy. Okay. Okay, make make. See, it's the note is not the important part. The part is keeping that belly and singing with all these parts not moving and maintaining an even tone. That's it. Uh. Okay, very good. Who wants to go next? Shankar. Okay, very good. Arpana. Again, I, I saw the, sh the shoulder moving. So. Very good. Perfect. Okay. Anita, you want I, to I go. Yes, okay. So what I hear from all you guys is there are, so you're, you're now beginning to feel, I don't know if you have felt it before, I don't want to claim that the first time you're doing it, but the feeling of how to sing while keeping your belly full with air, right? That's, that's the first new thing you have to do if you have not done it already, but absolutely essential to, to get used to this feeling. Now, I noticed as you're singing that some of your, you know, sometimes the voice was shaking a little bit. Some of you lost, you know, your breath quickly. Doesn't matter. All that can be fixed. Some of you were using too much air. So I'll show you how, right? There's something we'll come back to on the fifth day, but I'll explain what it means to use too much air. So a way of saying, singing too much air is this. Uh, So when I use that much air, I'll run out of air more time, right? So one of the things that we'll learn in this new way of singing is to reduce the, uh, the aperture of your singing voice. So we're going to try and pinch it voluntarily so that we're going to try and replicate that ish exercise with it, right? I said pinch it so that you, you really get the sharp ish. So now we're going to do the same thing, we'll sing ah, but I'm going to make you pinch your mouth, your throat inside, so that you use as little air as possible. So something like this. Uh... So all I did was the same thing, except that for the volume. Don't, don't think about singing loudly. Just get the sound out. Use as little as possible. Okay, that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to scramble the order now. So, uh, Ariman first. 
to make a belly, sing the note, but uh, you know, use try and use as little air as possible. Uh, Uncle, could you repeat that last part? So, make the belly, mm -hmm. sing the note, but when you're singing, please make sure that you use as little air as possible. Okay. Don't worry about volume. Uh, your throat. Yeah, that's what it feels like inside. Uh, Do you hear Uncle? No, I couldn't hear you. So can you try one more time? Okay. Uh, Good. So did you feel that you could last longer this time? A little bit. Yeah. That's, so that's the whole point, right? So as you practice this more and more, you'll be able to last longer and longer and longer eventually. Yeah. Uh, Shankar. Make a breath and, and, and close the aperture of your voice to sing thin with as little air as possible and, and then make it last. Oh, yeah. Uh, who did you call on again? Shankar, yes. Shankar, you. Oh, okay. Uh... Did, did it feel different? Uh, From the first time? Uh, sorry? Did it, did it feel different from the yeah. first time? Yeah. Uh, so that, that's a key thing. So to, to also observe your sensations as you sing. So not just sing because I'm telling you to, but also see how your body feels. When you sing. Okay. Ramya? Uh... Ah, much better. Okay, I can already tell the difference. Did you feel it different? Yes. Okay, uh, Arpana. Uh... It's very nice. I want you to, uh, Arpana, to pinch your voice a little bit more. Maybe you can do even better than this. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, uh, There's some noise next to me, so. Uh, uh, Anita, you want to go next? Sure. Is she okay. done? Why don't you do it again, Shreya? Okay. Okay. So remember this. So it's not about being loud. It's about being efficient. So loudness will come. We'll make your voice loud using other things, other techniques, but not using air. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh. Did it feel different for you? Yes. Right? Yeah. So, so the, the point is, you know, it's two things. One is controlling the air, but the feeling of control. It's like, it's like you're not just letting it all go up, right? You're not saying, you know, taking your note and throwing it out into the air, but controlling it to the extent that you can tell how much air you're going to use. Because the amount of air you use, you can vary this now. 
as you get more expert at it. And you can create all kinds of effort, uh, effects. So when you vary the amount of air, it will cause, so for example, the what I call the Ariana Grande effect. So when you uh, use more air, this gives you a breathy sound, as it's called. Ah, yes, that, right? and that's then the ending. Give you a, an emotional mm -hmm. feeling, right? Mm -hmm. But breathy singing is a kiss of death for your voice. You can only do it when you have to. In fact, it, the, the less air you use, the, la the longer your voice cords will last over time. So what happens for many Indian singers is that they don't know these things. So they sing 20 years. They their lungs out. And they ruin their words. Because they don't know them. You kids, you, you all have the, 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 you know, your long life ahead of you. You want to keep these wonderful vocal cords for a very long time. And so, the, so as I said, this is about the care. This workshop is about taking care of your voice. And so one of the basic things about taking care of the voice air and water. Minimum air, maximum water. That is the way to think about um, uh, the, the, the voice. Think about it this way. So last comment before that we go today. So think of the voice as a flute. Right? You, you put it up your, your lips. Think about how much air you have to blow to make a sound come out. If you blow really hard, like that's what a novice will do, right? Go, <laughs> no sound will come out. Or you get some very you know, uh, garbled sound. The experts see a chorusia, how much uh, air they give. It is tiny, tiny amounts of air. Because so that little bit of air is enough to create that huge sound out of that bamboo flute. That is how they are able to you know, play with long, uninterrupted sequences because you use so, much, so little air to create the sound. But until you realize this, you might not do it. So that is the purpose of this workshop, is to make you realize that, you know, less is more here when it comes to air. You can generate a marvelous, gorgeous sound with a tiny bit of air. Because remember, your, your vocal cords are about this big, no, about the half the length of my finger, and they're vibrating. And all, all the sound in the world is coming out of that vibration. And it's like a ring. Air is going between two uh, vocal cords, there's a gap in between. And they vibrate. And you have to, to do the minimum amount of effort to make them vibrate, and that's it. Everything else is taken care of by resonances, by amplification. It's like saying, I'm going to sing with a small voice, small sound, and then I'm going to teach you how the resonances in your head will act like a gigantic amplifier, like the, like the tumba in your tambura, to make that sound big. So don't ever mix, uh, mistake uh, big singing with a lot of effort or a lot of air. These are completely opposite things. If you use more air, you get less volume. Okay? So we are over time now, so I want to stop here. Any questions you have? Yes, yeah, so what is the topic for tomorrow? I was just trying the to look up. The topic is resonances. So resonances, to okay. Pick up where we started, we ended today, which is, you know, we sang that R sound. I'm going to teach you how to move that R sound up and down your throat. Mm -hmm. So there is something called positioning of the voice. So, oh, 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 oh. oh. So this goes back to you know nasality. You know, some people sing like Amitavachan. Right? So what is the difference? What is the actual uh, practical difference in the voice that they make? You can make all those sounds. You can sound like Amitavachan if you wanted to. Right? But he's making it exaggerated uh, by pushing it to the back of his throat, as you call it. Uh -huh. uh, whereas most Carnatic musicians That's sing right. the forward position of the voice. So tomorrow we'll talk about positioning and how it affects the resonances and so on. And I'll teach you how to improve the resonance of your voice. Okay. Sounds good.
Any other questions? Okay, very none. All right. Thank you very much. First year. Thank you. We will meet again tomorrow, same time. Same thank, time. thank you too. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you for taking the time. So do you work? I'm guessing you work in in the IT industry or something like that, yes. or okay. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So nice to meet you, Raj. Very nice. nice to meet you. Yeah. Talk to you. Talk tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Ramya, are you still there? Ramya, if you're talking, you're on mute. Okay.